one. Yeah, look at that one. <laughs> you right at the boat, man. Oh my goodness. I mean, right at the boat. <laughs> That's so much fun. Oh my goodness. Right at the boat, folks. Beautiful Lake Pleasant Bass. I guess I just said where I'm at, didn't I? <laughs> Beautiful start for the morning, huh? I'll tell you what, today we are at Lake Pleasant. You know, we're going into the summertime where we're getting those 100 degree days and uh, definitely post spawn. And uh, I'll tell you what I caught that fish on <laughs> was a skinny dipper. And I mean the actual skinny dipper made by Reaction Innovations. It's a great little bait and it's just a swim bait. Yeah, I guess you could say we're actually throwing a swim bait today. And uh, I'll tell you what, he smoked that bait. What happened was, is I was reeling that bait in, and this is a type of bait that you throw out there and just reel in, real simple, like a spinner bait, something like that. And uh, they follow this thing in. I saw the fish come up and look at it, and I paused it. When I stopped it, he smoked it right there, just boom, hit it. So if you can see, with a good pair of polarized sunglasses in this beautiful clear water here at Lake Pleasant, a lot of times you can watch the fish follow the bait gives you an, a chance to figure out what it's going to take, especially when you're close to the boat, <laughs> to see if the fish will bite. And a lot of times when you're reeling the thing in and they're following it, they're following it, you pause it for a second, boy, they smoke it. And you've got to set the hook right then and there. You won't feel the bite a lot of times. This is a lot of fun to throw. It's easy to throw. You can cover a lot of water with it. And that's something we'll have to do today is cover a lot of water to catch the fish we want to catch today. And so that's what we're gonna do is throw this. I've got this bait and I've also got, I've also got the Little Dipper, which is the smaller version of the Skinny Dipper. And you can see both of them. They're both swim baits. One's, one's a five inch, one's a three inch, okay? I've, got a, I've actually helped design a rod for this from Taipan, it's a 710. So it's a long rod spinning outfit on 20 pound test uh, line with a fluorocarbon leader, a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, little three aught wide gap owner hook and, and uh, there you go. That, that's for the Little Dipper. We haven't started on that yet. That's a fun bait to throw when they're chasing shad and, and you're smoking it across the top of the water. This particular bait this morning though is before the sun came, comes way up, I'm throwing it out there and I'm just giving it a medium retrieve. I'm trying to figure out the retrieve speed that the fish want and that's something you'll have to do. Sometimes they want it coming and burning across the water and just right under the surface and sometimes you slow roll it. Whatever you do, whether you slow roll these baits or whether you move them fast, a lot of times that tail gets them, you know, that little paddle tail. So it works out really good. He's tore this bait up, I'll have to put another one on, but I'll tell you, what a fun bait to throw. This is the grape color, kind of looks like a little shad with a little little grape color on top. Great for early morning. Finding the cadence that these fish want is another thing about it. You know, we're making some long casts and uh, I'm throwing it out there and I'm, I'm just kind of slow retrieving it right now. But a lot of times you can find it, you know, if you're not getting bit on the slow retrieve, you could speed it up a little bit or you can go back and forth, slow it and then speed it up a little bit. A lot of times when they're following it, if you change the, the rate of speed, throughout your bringing it in, you might be able to just initiate that strike. They could be following the bait and then all of a sudden, you know, when you change the speed of the bait, they think it's running from them or something and they go and bolt on it. So play around with that a little bit. Like I said, let the fish tell you what they want. Throw it a little while, it takes time. You know, we've been out here a little while and we've caught, we've had two bites. I'm trying to figure out what they want and how they want it presented, and of course, how they want the retrieve more than anything. Oh! That's a striper. <laughs> I forgot to tell you folks that. <laughs> Come on, son. Oh, there's a, there's a giant, giant largemouth down there underneath it. The striper got it and there's a giant largemouth down there. Oh, get in here. <laughs> Look at that. I forgot to tell you folks that uh, without a doubt, you'll also catch striper out here at Lake Pleasant 
on this bait. Now, and they will hit it. Let me get, gotcha. <laughs> there was a three or four pound largemouth, probably bigger than that, underneath this fish watching him. That's what makes the swim bait so fun. Let's let it go. It's not kind of the species we're going for, but the swim bait will always catch striper, always. Got it, got that one. It's not, oh, it's another striper. The striper are back here. <laughs> Look at that. All right, buddy. You're done, that's a white bass. <laughs> well, you'll, keep, you'll catch all the species in here <laughs> on these little swim baits. Tell you what, when you get around these trees, it's always good to throw these things and they'll hit them. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> like, I don't know if that one fish that was. Couldn't tell. Sun was in my eyes. Oh, that's a bass. That's a bass. He came back and got it, that fish did. <laughs> oh, that's a striper, that's what. <laughs> Look at that. That's on that little dipper. A striper came in there. There was a bass actually chasing that. That striper beat him to it, is what happened. They're in this cut, for sure. <laughs> Man, they got some good striper in here in the beautiful Lake Pleasant. Man, and they're active right now. They're chasing shad. They're active. You got to expect a few of these throughout the day, let me tell you. Okay, so now that's the little dipper and a little, little uh, smaller striper from the last one. But it shows you how much they love these little swim baits. You know, May's a great time of year to get out because the fish get active after the spawn. They'll start chasing those shad. And that's when this becomes a lot of fun, this type of deal. You can also throw a soft jerk bait, which would probably be really good this time of year as well. A soft jerk bait around these trees because those bass will watch their fry. They'll be all over the place. But that was not the fish that was actually looking at our bait earlier. But we'll take them. You know what's so funny is I'll be in a tournament and if I catch one of those fish like that, I'll be, I can't believe it's a striper. You'll be so upset. But when you're fun fishing, oh. That's that tug on that rod, man. That's always fun. Let's get out of here. We'll work our way down this bank. We know that the fish are somewhat aggressive. We can catch a few. We know the striper are aggressive. White bass are out there. There's fish all over the place. And you know what else that means? That usually tells us that there's probably a good amount of shad running through the area here. Oh, got another one right there. And that's probably a striper because it was in the middle. That's a white bass. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> They'll hit these baits, man. <laughs> if you're out for a good time just to catch a fish, you almost can't beat this bait. Oh, got that one. That's a large mouth. <laughs> I saw him. He came after it three or four times. Oh, there's another one down there. There's another one down there with him, two or three. Two or three fish down there with him, look at that. See the one following him right up underneath him, look at that. <laughs> Get up here, thank you son. <laughs> Folks, he's the smallest one we've caught all day out of all of them, but a fun fish. I'm gonna have to replace this bait, but it tears real easy but they sure are fun to throw. Ah, uh, there's one. <laughs> I'm paralleling the bank. Not a big one. We came up the river just to check it out. And uh, come on, dude, you're done. All right. There you go. We came up the river just to check it out, but I thought I'd parallel the bank a little bit and just 
kind of burn this a little bit faster. And we managed to catch one. It's amazing what size fish will hit the big skinny dipper there. Well, we call it big. We're so used to throwing the little one all the time. But this one here, <laughs> we'll still catch him. Get some good. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I thought it was a better one than that. <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. You know what's funny about this lake is you'll go to certain areas where you're not getting bit and you get discouraged and then uh, and then move around a little bit and look what happens. You get back into them a little bit. At least we're in the large mouth now. <laughs> look at that little guy. They're fat, man. He's eating shad. Good looking fish. Tore up my my swim bait. Probably time to talk a little bit, folks, about what I'm throwing it on and how we're throwing it. So we already know how we're throwing it, but I'm throwing this on a medium heavy. It's actually my spinnerbait rod. <laughs> because we're throwing such a big hook, that's a five aught owner wide gap hook I'm throwing that on, meaty hook. And what I love about it, it's got a little weight to it, so it helps pull the, pull the bait down a little bit. And uh, I'm throwing it on 17 pound test line. So that's pretty much the gizmo there. And then of course the Johnny Moore Signature Series Reel, 6.4 to one. That little dude gets the job done right there, that whole setup. Now, uh, the cool thing about this, even with the Little Dipper, I will say, okay, so if we get into an area, let's just say we get into an area with a lot of trees or Let's just say it has to slow down. I can throw, I can throw a big old uh, bass assassin jerk bait or something like that. Take this off, put the jerk bait on this same hook, or I can take the Ica, put that Ica on the same hook and throw it right into the brush pile uh, with the little dipper. You know, it's got a smaller hook. I can throw that four inch, you know, uh, cinco up up against that stuff. You can take a smaller like twitch fish from Arizona Custom Baits and put that on that particular rod and, and twitch that in. So there's multiple uses for this setup right here, just the way it is. If you really want to change stuff out and have some stuff on the deck and you want to go flip trees with an Ica or you want to try doing some soft jerk baits or something like that. So that's, that's a cool setup there. So you don't have to have a ton of rods on the deck this time of year to do that. So that's another cool thing I like about it. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing I'm gonna show you is I like to use a nail weight in the head of these baits. And the reason why is I get a longer cast, I can burn it a little bit quicker right under the surface, or I can let it sink and slow roll it and it goes down a little farther. Uh, I don't use the belly weight hooks too often. It's not that that's a bad thing. Uh, it's a confidence level thing for me. I don't like seeing that big weight on the belly of the hook, but you know, there's times I, I have to use it because I can't get a nail weight big enough. But this particular bait, what I like to do is take a little nail weight. Just a, I, I've cut that off a little piece of lead off a of nail weight. And all I do is just stick enough weight in there and I put it right under the chin. Leave enough room for your hook to go in and come back out. But I, I put it right up under the chin and there it is, okay? So the weight's actually stuck right in here but when I hook the hook up down to the bend, right there, it comes out right before I put the weight in. The weight's right there, right underneath the chin. And then I bring the, the hook up through there. I always pull the hook eye through the front of the bait. It tears the bait when you get hooked, but it leaves just the line sticking out. And then I bring this little dude right up through there like so, and you can see it's kind of exposed right there. And then I skin it just a little bit and you're good to go. That's the bait right there. Oh, there's a good one. Well, that's gotta be a striper probably. It's digging, it's digging. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a big old striper. <laughs> They're all over the place in this area. Oh my goodness, look at the size of that fish, folks. <laughs> like I said, we're not in tournament mode, so it's always fun to catch them. Look at that. <laughs> Get in here, Moby. <laughs> Done with that. 
you're in the boat now. What are you gonna do? You're like a fish out of water. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Ooh, look at the stripes on that bad boy. You know, I don't catch striper out here very often. I'm usually catching the, the, the large mouth, but that fish, that was a fighter. That's amazing. You know, anytime you throw those swim baits, jerk baits, things like that, they're, you're prone to get those kind of fish. They'll wear you out, man. <laughs> I don't care what you say, that's fun. Ah, I can picture myself now in a tournament going, I can't believe it. You know, you have to throw long casts in this clear water. And one thing that helps you, and I can't overstate this enough, is you have to throw braid line. You know, we got a 710 rod here made by Taipan, which is awesome for this kind of fishing for the Little Dipper. But to get that Little Dipper way out there and to get those real long casts, what else helps is putting some braid line on there. I use a 20 pound braid. Learn how to throw it, learn how to tie the knot for your leader. The, the, the knot that I use is an Alberto knot. And throw yourself on a leader. And remember that you don't want to reel your leader up into the reel. You know, keep your leader out here in between these guides and you'll, you'll do a lot better with your cast. But what the braid allows to do, it's like thread. You can throw it out there, it'll go for a mile. If I was throwing regular line, like fluorocarbon line or monofilament line, it won't go half that distance. So you need the distance a lot of times when you're throwing these, especially in clear water because you don't want to be right on top of the fish. So in saying that, you got to do that. Other than that, we've had a great day on the show today. I'll tell you what, Lake Pleasant did not disappoint this morning, had a lot of fun, caught some stripers, some white bass. We just had a ball. So, you know, and some large mouth, obviously. Saw some cool areas, the river's open, so that's really neat. But uh, get out here, it's beautiful out. Uh, it's starting to get hot, you know, we're starting to touch those 100 degree temperatures. So, you know, it's nice to get on the lake early and get off early. And that's what we're gonna do today. Thanks for joining us on the water. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>